Allow me to welcome our first speaker, Eric C. from Florence, Arizona. Slow claps. <laughs> my name is Eric Kamenak. Hi, Eric. I'm a little upset because my sponsor told me that he would sit in the front row in his boxers to make me feel comfortable. <laughs> and he's not in the front row, and I think he's wearing pants, so. <laughs> uh, so I guess the topic is for the newcomers didn't see anyone stand up in their first 30 days. We have one person? Woo! Awesome. <laughs> Do we have anyone in their first year? Oh. Three. We got three peeps. Okay. All right. So where do I start, man? Um, first and foremost, I like to point out that like when I first came here, and actually, how long do I have to speak? Thirty minutes. Thirty minutes. Okay. Um, when I first got here, um, you know. I first like thought of like Narcotics Anonymous as a place to like gain recovery and stuff. Um, yeah, I didn't know if I didn't know if it, if it would work. There's a lot of like in and out, and I and I'll kind of like jump around about that. But um, you know, the the biggest thing that that like came across my mind is, um, you know, I didn't I didn't think staying clean was something that was in my cards. I didn't think it was something that I that I could do, because when I came through the first first door, first exposure to NA, I didn't feel a part of at all, you know. I remember just being so nervous and anxious and, and, and coming through that door and sitting right by the door and, and I remember someone stuffed literature in my, in, my, in my hand and I was just like, oh my God, you know, what do I do? You know, I, I knew what I had to do because I've been online meetings before and I was talking, I, you know, I was really forward online, but here I am face to face and I was like physically dependent so I was sick and I was sitting there and all these people are talking and and um, I started I started looking out in the crowd and seeing all the differences from me right like like right away I remember sitting down and I'll, I'll just be blunt I saw this black dude who looked like he sold dope he was covered in gold jewelry he had like a jersey on Jordans and he was talking to this skinny hillbilly chick when she didn't have any teeth and she looked like a straight hick right and they're having a conversation and they're getting along great and I'm like what the F is going on here like like this is this is not anything I've ever seen before, right? Straight up, nothing I've ever seen before. So I'm sitting there and I'm focused on them, and they're just having a great conversation, and everyone in the room was happy, right? But me, right? <laughs> so so I'm sitting there and I'm just I'm just I'm a wreck, man. I'm a wreck, and um, you know my my exposure to NA was this isn't something that I could do. Now, needless to say, I had many years like using and trying to, to stay clean by myself and coming in and out. And still those differences were there. That These people are happy. They can do it. They've got this like gene that I don't have of getting clean. Like I'm an addict. We use dope on the streets. We don't get clean. We cause chaos, end up in jail. Our family members throw us out. We pawn your stuff. You know what I mean? This is what we do where we have nothing to do with the Narcotics Anonymous people, it's like two separate people. And the, you know, that, that's how I felt, right? And you know, I spent many years coming in the rooms not feeling a part of because I uh, struggled with inadequacy my whole entire life. You know, I spent my whole childhood not feeling like I was a part of, constantly feeling like the class clown and, and speaking out loud and, and causing problems in school just because I was, I was trying to fit in, you know? So when I came to NA, <laughs> it was really hard for me to ever like think that this could possibly be something um, that that's going to work for me. Now I want to shatter a myth or a statement, and if you don't agree with it, you can argue or fight me in the hallway afterwards. It's cool. Um, I believe relapse is a part of anyone's story. When people say relapse isn't part of my story, I don't believe that because I wouldn't have come to NA if relapse wasn't a part of my story because I couldn't stay clean by myself. And I don't think anyone in Narcotics Anonymous can stay clean by themselves. You know, they come here because you relapse. So if you're a habitual in and outer, you know, relapser every couple of years, just know that, man, I was too. You know, I just happened to have not relapsed anytime soon. And that's a big freaking step in, in, in my life. Um, so a little bit about my past, you know, I was born and raised in Anchorage, Alaska, um, you know, middle class home. I had a lot of friends. I was taken care of. There wasn't disturbances 
in the household. You know, I did okay in school. When I applied myself, I did well. But, you know, I was, an, I was an outcast, you know what I mean? So I was constantly causing issues, constantly getting kicked out. And um, using drugs and alcohol was something we started as, as, as to be outcast. We started it just to rebel, right? <laughs> the, the, like, kicking in of, of needing and finding means to get more it hasn't really excelled yet until, like, my later years. But, you know, I, I started in Alaska, and, and everything was fine, you know? I just knew that, like, obviously that... I wasn't freaking normal. I'm trying not to cuss here. That's my new thing. But, um, you know, I knew I, I wasn't normal. You know what I mean? So, you know, not, not being normal and feeling inadequate is, is a huge part of me coming to Narcotics Anonymous and not understanding how this stuff goes. Not understanding when someone says, stay till the miracle happens, and I'm just like dying. You know, I'm upset. I can't stay clean. They say, stay till the miracle happens. And I'm like, when is it gonna, when is it gonna happen? When is it gonna start? You know? Because I didn't have much left. <laughs> I don't know how I made it this far. I never planned to stay clean this far. I never thought I'd make it to this age. In fact, I knew at the point in my using that when I finally took the geographical change to come to Arizona, that the drugs down here were a lot cheaper and a lot stronger, and I was ready. You know, I was ready for that. You know what I mean? So when I came down here, and thought I'd give Narcotics Anonymous another shot, you know, live in the flesh, I'm back. <laughs> Moved down here, had a shiny motorcycle, going to meetings. Um, you know, I knew <laughs> if, 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 if stuff was going to hit the fan, that I was going to hit the streets and I was going to start to have a good time. Because I wasn't having a good time being clean. You know, I wasn't happy. Um, my relationships with people weren't, I'd say eye to eye, you know what I mean? Like I can look at you and we can have a conversation and I can be here and present. That was not something that I could do. I, and I struggle from ADHD and I have this problem with like in my relationships still that it's, sometimes it's difficult for me to be present. But, you know, being in my active addiction, I just couldn't be present for anything, for anything. And I still struggle today being on time and being responsible and showing up to places where I say I'm going to go. I still struggle with these things, you know. But when I was in active addiction... It was like, oh, pick a card, you know. If you pick the ace of spades, I'm going to show up. That's how, that's how it was, you know. So relationships already, you know, I, I, I was failures. Didn't have any successful sexual romantic relationships. It was, it was all pretty bad. Um, friendships came and, and gone. You know, I'm an addict. This is the normal stuff for us addicts, right? So when I came down to Arizona, you know, I was here for um, all the reasons that wasn't my own reasons to be clean, right? I had already been trying to clean up the chaos and um, lose it all again and then clean up the chaos and lose it all again. Like that, that was my natural living thing. And, and you know, in fact, I was pretty damn good at, um, you know, one day sweeping the street, the next day freaking having a firework party. You know what I mean? That was my normal thing. And you know what? When I look back and I really break it down to like what I went through when I cleaned up the chaos every, every freaking time, geez, the willingness I had to do that, right? The willingness that I, that I forgot that I had when I came through the door and I didn't know what to do. Or I didn't know how to reach out and have a conversation and say, I need some help from someone, right? But I had that willingness to clean up all that crap. And we know how much crap that is. That's some serious stuff, man. Serious stuff, doing that stuff to to please our family members. But why we didn't we didn't really have relationships anyways. So it's just kind of a conundrum in my head that I that I kind of think when I think of like, you know, my my early teens and, and childhood of all this the, these dilemmas that I created. But um, you know, so I, I came to Narcotics Anonymous in Arizona after being uh, you know in and out of, of just trying to trying to be clean. Went to many um, many detoxes. So it's part of my story I don't really bring up, but um, you know my sponsor has this thing about how he says that when when he got clean that uh, he thought it was like a like and I'm, I'm using a story um, that it's like a car wash that you go in dirty as hell and you come out clean, clean ready to go and that's kind of what happened when I went to detox. I would come there, you know, I'd clean up my wreckage for a few days in there and I call my family, okay, I'm clean. And they're like, great, you know, we don't trust you. And I'd be like, why? <laughs> I don't understand, you know. And I'd go back, oh, God damn it, well, I'm going to use now. You know, I'm going to show them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, so that, that's what I did, man. I went, to, I went to meetings, and you know what? I never was getting clean for myself, you know what I mean? And I wasn't able to, to communicate with people. I showed up, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't sit through a speaker meeting. 
I hated speaker meetings. I hated speaker meetings. I couldn't sit down with old timers and have conversations and ask them how they do it. I couldn't do it. I was attracted to the young people, newcomers. I went to the young people, newcomer meetings. And, and like that's, that's what I was attracted to. I was attracted to the women and, and, and trying to create the things in my life that made me feel adequate in recovery, that made me a part of. Because people, when they got clean, they accumulated vehicles and a job, you know, <clears throat> these, these toys and things. So I was more focused on getting those things than I was focused on doing any damn step work or any recovery whatsoever. Do you know what I mean? So, you know, it's really no surprise that I didn't stay clean, that it wasn't working, and I was asking myself, why isn't it working? And I was calling my sponsor at 3 in the morning crying because I, I was sick, and I didn't know. And he suggested things, and I'd try them for a hot minute, and I'd be on that newcomer pink cloud, and I'd be all happy, you know what I mean? And then next time, oh, girl, you know what I mean? And it's just, I'm off the, from, from this path to that path. Just like this, just in a second, right? As soon as I stopped feeling upset, you know what I mean, and started feeling good, I could do it on my own. This happened again and again. I couldn't get a year clean. And I didn't know why, because I was going to meetings. I had a sponsor. You know, I was doing these things. But I couldn't stay clean. I didn't know why. So I kept using. I kept coming back. And then my sponsor said, you know, you should probably do this, do this, do this. And he's, one of them was, he, you probably shouldn't be in a relationship. You're not good at relationships. I got in a relationship. And somehow, I managed to get a year clean. I had a lot of things at that year clean. A lot of things. And this was like my first real clean time. She broke up with me and I used. And I went out for a couple years. You know? <laughs> And then and going out, I got in another unhealthy relationship. And then I got sentenced to uh, a couple years of incarceration. And then I came back to Narcotics and Arms again. You know, but at that time, the pain was so strong. I didn't have anything to really, like, bring to the table to mask me who I was. You know, and I, and I, and I came. They took me in. And they knew I was full of shit. I couldn't bring. <laughs> I couldn't bring that full of shit face to the meeting. They knew it, right? But I knew it was either these guys or these guys. And these guys didn't play nice, and these guys didn't stay clean. So I hung out with these guys, you know. And I asked them how to live. And my morals changed, you know. Things changed. You know, I got released. I managed to, to stay clean. And what it comes down to is, um, you know, I asked myself this because I was just like, we we're all curious. Like, why didn't I get clean sooner? Um, why can't this person get clean? You know, if only they did this. If only they did that, they'll stay clean. And it's just like, man. I like to say that we are... Um, you know, we're, 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 we're some, we're, we are spiritual warriors. You know, we're fighting like mental wars. Being an addict, you're fighting mental wars. And sometimes you got to give yourself props for that. Because normal people don't have to go through the crap that we do. Especially when we get clean. And we're coming in and out of that room. And we're afraid. But we come anyways. And that willingness to walk through the door that time after a relapse or that first time when we don't know anyone. And all we can think of is the differences because, you know, we're trying to, like, save face right there. We're trying to, like, we're trying to, like, say, hey, I don't feel good. I don't want to be here. Give me some justification to not be here. Like, that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing, you know. Wish there was a lot more newcomers here. But that's okay. That's, but that's okay. But... You know, anyone that's sitting here should know what it's like to come to that door and, and, and just feel that and feel the pain that you brought with you from, from your life, you know, and not feel like it, like it fits here. But, um, you know, I want to kind of get in with what, what saved my ass um, is the people you guys did, you know. I finally got sick and tired of trying to fight this by myself because that's what I was doing my whole life, man. I might have been with him or her, 
you know, this group getting loaded and stuff, you know, but they weren't there for me. They weren't there for me at night when I was in pain, upset, you know, mentally in pain, wondering why I, I, I do the things I do. You know, I hurt the people I hurt. You know, I steal from the people I steal that love me. That love me. Why do I do this? I don't understand. You know, those people don't understand that, that stuff. You know, only people my entire life that understand what's going on are in these rooms. And, and being able to relate and finally having a real conversation with some peeps, you know, and finding out that I'm not alone. But that's not what's kept me clean, you know. That was a part of it, you know. That was the big stigma between me habitually relapsing and not relapsing is finally being a part of. You know, and getting over the whole deal that if I go through some crap, I can pick up my phone and call someone. And I do. I wish Tommy C. was here because um, uh, a little story about Tommy C. A while ago, I was going through, a couple years ago, I was going through a lot of freaking pain. And, and, I, and I was really upset. I had this huge, like, like fracture two thing that, that had happened when I was incarcerated. And it was, like, pushing into a nerve. And I went to a meeting, and Tommy C., and, I, and I've met him a couple times. And I sat there and I shared about it. And I can't, like, paraphrase or quote word for word about what he said. But he basically was talking about, hey, man, like, you know, we, we can talk about doing things. We can talk about doing things. But, you know, if we don't do them, we're not living spiritual principles. You know, he said in this, Tommy C., like, <laughs> like really cares about it. But it's okay. I was in so much pain. I didn't think it was being smart. I was like, oh, you know what? Yes, yes. So I got in my car, and I was in Tucson for a wedding, and I, and I drive, and I'm, and I'm, like, headed to the hospital. I know they're going to give me, like, medications, and I'm freaking the fuck out. Excuse my language. Damn it. It happened. <laughs> Sorry, Jay. Um, so I'm calling my sponsor, and I'm beating my, my um, dashboard in my car. <laughs> and, and I was a mess, you know what I mean? But, um, you know, I put his number in my phone. And not too long ago, I was going through something, and I gave him a call just randomly, you know what I mean? And it's just like, it's just that, 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 that stuck with me. And why I want to bring that up is because we meet these people in these rooms, and we connect. And um, in a moment's notice, we can reach out to them, you know what I mean? And I wouldn't have thought in two years I would, have, I would call Tommy C. Um, from left field, you know, with some, with some heavy stuff because we're not really close. But I did, you know, because it came to that moment where I was going down that phone list, and I was calling people. Because I had to hear the voice of an addict, because I was afraid I was going to use. You know? And I got a hold of someone, and I didn't use. You know? I didn't use. But, I, but uh, he, would have, he would probably laugh to hear that. So, <laughs> so anyways, um, you know, moving forward. You know, a lot of things have, have has happened in the past five years of my recovery, good and bad. I'm trying not to get emotional, but you know, I'll never forget where I came from when I came through this door. You know, I didn't have the ability to really show my emotion when I came through the door. I was a mess. I shaked in my in my seat. I was just. You know what I mean? And I just, and, my, and I thought all night, and now it's just like, over the, after the years, it, my, my emotions just pour out. <laughs> and, and I'm cool with that. You know what I mean? Because that's a gift. That's a gift you get in recovery, you know? So anyway, so, so moving forward, you know, the relationships and people that I have in my life today are incomparable to anything I have in my life. They are my prized possessions, you know? They are not the flashy car that I had in my life when I was a newcomer. They are my tools. They, they are everything to me. Without the people in the rooms, you know, I wouldn't be clean, plain and simple, you know. And I'm a person that is not very good in, in huge groups. I never have been, you know what I mean? I always kind of like built my own little crew of people. And um, when I couldn't tolerate certain things, I changed it. You know, I cut relationships out, right? I'm powerless now. You know, I'm powerless over the people that are in my life, good and bad. You have to get along with the people in the rooms no matter what. They create chaos in your lives. you got to f- deal with it. You know what I mean? You just got to work through it. And then that's what I face today. So I get anxious. I get anxious. A lot of things happen today. You know, I had my first panic attack in my entire life at ARCNA. So trying to, like, fluctuate what I'm feeling these days is kind of difficult. You know, but I'm, but I'm moving forward, and I'm moving forward with you, you know. 
So I um, kind of want to back pace a little bit about, you know, learning a new life as a newcomer. And, um, you know, I mean, you already know the story. If you're cleaning, you've been here a while, and you're not white knuckling angry in the corner, then you already know that you took suggestions from people, that you did what they did, because that's what I did. I could sit here and tell your story, and you already know. You know, I went to meetings, got a sponsor, you know, became a part of, you know, showed up. You know, I showed up. That's what I did. And, I, and I'm here, and I get to talk about it. And I never would have thought I would be at a convention or so many speakers in my entire life because that's where I didn't want to be. Because sitting still in a meeting was something I couldn't do. And we still have problems doing it, but we can do it anyways. You know what I mean? And we meet these people in these rooms, and we want to hear them talk. And we look forward to it. And we wait months or a year to hear them talk. And then we talk to them afterwards and say, hey, man, you know, I've been waiting to hear you talk <laughs> since I met you, finally. And you know what? You stay, stay here long enough, you're going to hear everyone talk. I guess this is my turn at the, at the convention. I guess that, that, that's where I'm at. So um, I'd say if you're new, but there's, there's a few of you. If you're new, just keep coming. If you have a problem with that, do it in spite of the person that says it. Show them. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, keep doing it because that, that's all I really had was, was keep coming back. You know what I mean? I just kept coming in spite of them, you know? And I didn't understand. Stay till the miracle happens. I didn't understand that. You know, I think okay, uh, something I forgot to address is like my spirituality. And I'll get into that real quick since I have about five minutes. Um, I've never been a spiritual person in my entire life. I never have been. In fact, I'm just going to throw out some awesomeness from, from the world. Um, my ex-grand sponsor, which actually relapsed, I'll, I'll report that. Um, so when I came back and I got a sponsor, my sponsor's uh, higher power was the program of Narcotics Anonymous. So I like to borrow that as my, as my higher power. His sponsor is, is a Caucasian man, and his, his, or, um, his spiritual higher power is like Native American traditions. So I just wanted to kind of like grasp that when I came back and I saw this like vastness of people's higher powers <laughs> and still not knowing what mine is really like made me feel at home, you know? So I, I've used the Narcotics Anonymous one for a while. And sometimes, you know, I, I, there's evidence of other ones in my, in my life and I, and I see that. But uh, I just wanted to point out that, that when, I, when, I, when I came here, like God was not, God was not on my side in my mind, you know, God was someone I prayed to in the back of the cop car, or when I called my mom or dad and wanted them to send me a money gram, because I'm sitting on the side of the road with nothing, and, and I'm sick, <laughs> and I got crap, <laughs> you know what I mean, that's when, that's when, when, but you know, God hasn't really like, I don't feel like in my life today, has really like spoken out, of, and I'm not, my, my identity of this higher power in my life. Isn't, isn't an easy thing for me, you know what I mean? But I'm still here, and I'm still clean. And regardless of what your higher power is, or if you have one, if you believe or not, it doesn't freaking matter, you know? That's the one thing that, that made me feel at home, is having the, the wide vastness that we have here, you know, in our fellowship, you know? So, with that being said, thank you very much for coming to, to the convention. I hope to see you at many season acts come. Thank you.